Proper GPS is presented by Fisherman's Marine and Outdoor. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you very much for watching the show this evening. We're joined in the studio by Bruce Pauly from the CCA Oregon. So let's just get right to it. Um, where are we at now? What is the process for this to get going? Because it's not, it's not that it's fledgling. It's actually underway. Where, where, where oh, yeah. are we at? Yeah, the, the bill has been introduced since earlier this year. Um, it's passed through committee in the House, mm -hmm. and it's been introduced um, by Senator Reich from, uh, I think I pronounced that right, from Idaho, mm -hmm. um, on the Commerce Committee uh, in the uh, in the Senate side. Mm -hmm. So what we that's why when you're seeing these, you know, contact your senator at the end of these segments, mm -hmm. that's why we're asking you to contact your senator. That's where we really need the help. Um, we, CCA, met with Senators Wyden and Merkley back in May and uh, brought it to their attention, and they were very, you know, considerate and listened to our concerns and seemed interested. Um, but then when this ODFW uh, report came out that said 90% chance of uh, extinction if we do nothing, uh, it was a game changer and it's really gotten their attention. So ODFW has gone and met with all the congressional uh, delegation. Um, we're having some follow-up meetings with some of the uh, Congress people, uh, Suzanne Bonamici, uh, will be later this month. Mm -hmm. um, that was set up by the Columbia River Treaty Tribes. So, um, I mean, we've all been working it. We in the coalition have been working this. You talked about Ballard Locks. Um, there's been kind of a group conferencing about this for the last few weeks. And, you know, WDFW is part of that as well. Sure. And um, the guy brought up, like, you know, Ballard Locks. Does anybody yeah. not remember it's that? It's a perfect you know, as example. We, as we mucked around trying to figure out how to haul Herschel down to San Diego and how long it was going to take him to get back. Days. And, and, and bring, yes. bring in fiberglass killer whales and play whale music. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> we watched an endangered species go extinct. Yeah. And we, we the, the result is predictable if we do nothing. Yeah. Or, or we do the things that we know don't work. Now, several <laughs> questions have been asked on our Facebook page. One in particular was, you know, uh, do, and I'm, I'm only throwing in an accent because I just love to do it. Can, can, can a private citizen go out there and go shoot him too? That's well, never going to happen. Yep. No. Uh, no, that's never going to happen. So it's going to be something that gets done federally. It, They're going to have somebody it, come it, in. It expand, the, the bill would expand the number of uh, groups that have authority mm -hmm. to get removal permits. Okay. Uh, but it's going to be the tribes, it's going to be the states, um, it's going to be the concerned, basically, governmental agencies mm -hmm. that are involved, and the tribes are involved because of their treaty rights. Yeah, good. So, I would uh, just love to watch the tribes come down here. I'd even let them stay at my house. <laughs> come in, hang out, dude. We'll have a good time. You yeah, just go out so, there. That'd be awesome. But no, private citizens won't be doing any removals, no. Okay, so that's just a question that we always get. Not that I've ever heard of, no. <laughs> I don't think it's ever going to happen. Every year, this is from William, every year the states, Oregon and Washington, have been given a quota for the number of sea lions that can be removed. They have not filled that quota yet. Why? There is a provision under the Marine Mammal Protection Act where you can remove some sea lions. Mm -hmm. And that's the that was the authority that, that ODFW asked for. Uh, on the Willamette this year for the first time. We've never done that on the Willamette. Mm -hmm. We've done that on the Columbia. Um, the, the Humane Society of the United States sued in the Ninth Circuit in order to limit, like basically set uh, rules of engagement. Mm -hmm. Basically, you have to, I gotta stop saying basically, you have to identify an offending sea lion. Mm -hmm. You know, that one right there with a little nick out of his left ear is the one that I've seen eating sea li uh, steel, salmon and steelhead up here. Mm -hmm. And so he has to be identified as an individual when he hauls out into a haul out trap and they can drop the gate and catch that guy, mm -hmm. they say, okay, you're one of the bad, you're on the bad list. You get to go back in a truck and probably not come back to the river. Sure. Um, but that's the rules of engagement that we're currently working under. So it makes it extremely difficult to have much of an impact. That's why this NOAA study came out and said this, you know, pulling out of a few dozen sea lions every year, you know, isn't keeping up with the, re you know, the, the increase of what's been coming in to replace them. And some of the things <laughs> that should just make people terrified is that you've got sea lions that are now completely unafraid of humans. Okay. Uh, they, their, their populations are well over 300,000 currently. New numbers right. are, are expected to come out within the next 60 days. I did my own research there. Right. Uh, new numbers for the, for the sea lions. Their numbers are bigger now than they've ever been. And you can see by that video right now, it, this is just one instance that you saw. This happened a few months ago, if you were unaware. Um, but they have absolutely no fear of humans. Killing them isn't necessarily going to make them scared of humans, but it's going to send a message. They're very smart animals. If they smell something going on, they're going to know we don't need to be in this area. We yep. need to leave. Yep. 
they're, they're a very smart animal that does, you know, learn by watching others, and they, they, they learn very quickly. Uh, I, I may have told you this story. I was out of my dory out of Pacific City a few years ago, and I saw a large uh, stellar's, bull stellar sea lion eating about a six-foot-long sturgeon in the ocean out behind the rock about a quarter mile out of Pacific City. Really? I've, never, I've never even talked to a doryman that's caught a sturgeon. We know they swim out to the ocean and live. Sure. But, you know, I was talking to Robin Brown at ODFW, their, their sea lion guy, and told him what I'd seen. And I said, that sea, that sea lion must have learned to eat sturgeon in the in Columbia, Columbia River. Mm -hmm. And when he swam back out there in the ocean, saw a sturgeon and said, hey, that's food. Right. And he said, that you, you got it exactly. That they're a, that's a learned, yeah, uh, learned behavior. habit. You bet. Yeah, scary. Because uh, actually, and I'm no biologist, but they say that sturgeon go out, hit deep, and then turn left. And I don't know what reality is here, but yeah, that's I really don't know much about migratory patterns in the ocean. That, that's, that, that's very interesting. But yeah, I saw I saw this thing happen, and Jack Smith was with me. We pulled up to it in my dory. We're 20 feet away, and this thing was tearing apart a six-foot-long white sturgeon in the salt in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder yeah. if he thought it tastes better because it was in the salt water. Hey, who knows? All right, we're going to cut to a quick break. When we come back, I want to try to keep as much time as I can with Bruce Pauley from the CCA Oregon. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a couple minutes.